So, the past month I've been creating an open world map for my game Rift Division, and in this video I'll showcase the process I took to get this open world map completely procedurally, just using code. Before I created any systems, I first needed to decide on what requirements I wanted the map to have. As Rift Division is a survival game, I wanted an open world map, and the size I thought would be best for this is an 8km squared map with a river system. I also wanted some dense forests and open fields, alongside some more ragged terrain such as cliffs and mountains. This should hopefully create enough variety to make the map interesting and fun to play. Now, Unity provides a lot of tools for creating terrains by hand, however its selection of random generation tools are limited. I knew I had to create my own terrain systems for this, and so I went straight to writing a terrain generator of my own. I've previously worked with a lot of procedural generation in some of my older projects, and so I had a good idea of how I could go about doing this. The way terrains are usually made is by layering different types of procedural noise on top of each other, each with different features to create a height map which would then be used to set the height on different points on the terrain. This noise can't be completely random though, otherwise we'd end up with a messy landscape that has no resemblance to a real life terrain at all. Instead, a more popular choice is to use something called purling noise, because it provides a coherent output that can create nice rolling hills similar to in real life. However, this noise is a bit too smooth and repetitive for good looking terrain. This can be avoided by stacking up different frequencies of purling noise to create a more detailed outcome. Each noise map is defined as an octave, and the more octaves that are used, the more details we can add. Each layer of noise in this case is influencing the overall height map by half the amount as the previous one, and having double the frequency. This ensures the original layer's shape is not lost due to following octaves of noise. This is a great starting point for the terrain, however one of my requirements was to make it an island. This is a simple modification that I can make to the noise by tapering off the height towards the edges of the map. As you can see, once this is applied, the edges of the map are now underwater and the central part is above. This terrain still looks a bit boring though, and I thought I could create some more mountainous regions by taking the absolute value of the noise and then subtracting it from one. This gives some nice peaks and variety to the map. This technique's called ridged multifractal noise and is great for this sort of application. Next, I wanted to try and simulate some cliffs and steeper parts of the terrain. This took a while to figure out, but I settled for using a method called Voronoi noise. This type of noise forms these caustic like patterns which are sharp in nature towards the edge, it's quite similar to how ridged multifractal noise looks. If we take the hashed value of each cell and perturb the input, we can get these swirly patterns in the noise map, and if we take a closer look, the difference between a lot of these values is quite high, forming these steep gradients and cliffs. This is all looking great, but I have one more requirement, rivers. My requirement for rivers is to make them all on the same level, similar to how Ark Survival Evolved made their rivers. This will work well for gameplay further down the line, as if I decide to have boats, they'll be able to transition from sea to rivers without any additional effort. This will also save on some performance, as I can use one huge plane to represent the water, instead of lots of little water objects. I managed to get some nice rivers by using an inverted ridged multifractal alongside some spline manipulation to give this result. The final touches I added to the generation process is a hydraulic erosion step, which is a bit more of a complex topic, but essentially simulates real life erosion to form some nice detail in steeper regions of the map. I also added a custom beach spline which will flatten out the areas near the sea to give a nice beach. Now I've put all these techniques together into a map generator, it's time to play around with some of the values until I find one I like. Here's a quick fly around the height map that I decided to choose, I think it has some nice variety in all the features I wanted. Now I have a base terrain for my map, I needed to decorate it with some textures and assets. I've collected a large set of assets over the years working with Unity, so I picked out a nice variety of trees, bushes, rocks and grass to decorate my terrain with. To texture the terrain, I found this nice free tool called Terrain Decorator. This lets me decide a set of rules for texturing which allows me to press one button and get a convincing splat of textures for my terrain. I'm pretty happy with how the texturing has turned out. There's one slight issue with the way that the textures look, they're all obviously tiled. This probably won't be an issue once I have grass and other details on the floor, 
but I found a method called stochastic texturing and I thought I'd add it to my terrain shader to see what it looked like. The way this works is by essentially blending multiple samples of the same texture to remove any repetition. The code I use looks like this, I'll leave some links in the description for more resources on this if you're interested. Now I have the base terrain, it's time to start adding details. This would take way too long to do by hand, so I'm going to let the procedural generation do most of the heavy work here. Let's start with placing some trees. The naive way to go about this is to just select some random points on the terrain and place the trees there. As you can see, the distribution of the trees does not look very natural, as some trees are too close to others, causing them to intersect. A more natural way to place objects like trees is to use something called Poisson Disk Sampling. The general way this works is by picking some points in an area and ensuring no two points overlap for a set radius. However, this is not the final solution, as what happens if we want to have more objects with different sizes? The algorithm I currently have does not support this, although I found a simple modification that can be made so the search space for each point uses the smallest radius as increments to ensure that a variety of sizes can be covered. These points look like they're a bit too sparse, although if we look at the overlapping radii, you'll see that no two points are within the radius of any other point. The results for different objects are quite convincing and gives a nice evenly distributed forest. This can also be easily tweaked to give a more dense or sparse appearance. Finally, we just need a way to place some grass and other small details on the terrain. For the grass, bushes and other small details, I decided to just use randomness as it doesn't really matter if two pieces of grass overlap. Although, I did use some more purling noise to clump up different bushes so the landscape looks a little bit more natural. I also gave some rules to all the objects, such as slope and height ranges, and a mask map for different regions of the map, as well as terrain layer limiting. After creating all these systems for placing the details, it's time to see the final product. So that's how I went about creating my open world map for Rift Division. My plan is to further iterate on what I've created here by hand painting other details and fine tuning the appearance a bit more. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, and if you want to see how the game is progressing, subscribe to this channel and turn notifications on. Any feedback is greatly appreciated, so if you have any suggestions or questions about the game or future devlogs, do let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.